Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m., Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this quick hit, we're talking about one of the most beloved groups of the 60s and 70s. They charted 16 hits, but were never able to reach the top spot. Who are they? Well, I'll give you a hint. We'll be looking out my back door to see who it is. Also, Michael J. Fox is forever known as Marty McFly in the Back to the Future films. But did you know that most of the movie was actually filmed with a different actor in the lead role before Michael J. Fox made it his own? Stay tuned. You're listening to a 3324 podcast quick hit with Dean Legiro, where Dean shares stories and trivia about his favorite chart hits, actors, movies, and more. Welcome, friends. I'm Dean Legiro, and this is your quick hit for the week. First known as the Blue Velvets, then the Gollywogs. It wasn't until 1968 when they changed their name to Credence Clearwater Revival that their fortunes would change. Led by John Fogarty and with brother Tom on guitar, Stu Cook on bass, and Doug Clifford on drums, CCR released seven albums, with two of those going to number one. Although they were from California, CCR pioneered what would come to be known as Swamp Rock and be one of the forerunners of Southern Rock as well. Their first greatest hits album has spent 500 non-consecutive weeks on the top album charts as of December 2020. That's absolutely amazing. Now let's get to the singles. Proud Mary, Bad Moon Rising, Fortunate Son, Down on the Corner, Have You Ever Seen the Rain, and many more are staples of rock radio and featured in movies and commercials. Proud Mary would be heavily covered by other artists, most notably Ike and Tina Turner and Elvis Presley. Even Mr. Spock, Leonard Nimoy, would try his hand at a cover version. CCR charted 16 singles with 9 hitting the top 10. Incredibly, out of those 9, 5 hit the number 2 spot, but none were able to make it to the top of the mountain. And speaking of Proud Mary, it was stopped not by one, but by two different songs preventing it from reaching that top spot. The week of March 8th, 1969, Sly and the Family Stone's classic Everyday People was holding strong at number 1. The following week, the song Dizzy by Tommy Rowe would leapfrog from its number four position over CCR, which was still at number two, and take the top spot. Of note, one of CCR's most popular and iconic songs, Fortunate Son, never even cracked the top ten. So what does this say about some of the most popular songs of our lives? Do they have to hit number one? In the case of CCR, not even close. With album sales of over 28 million to date, they are a beloved part of music history, no matter where they landed on the charts. Next up, we're looking at the actor that filmed most of Back to the Future before he was replaced by Michael J. Fox. Who was he, and why didn't he work out? We'll be right back. Back to the Future is recognized as one of the best films of all time, easily found on many best-of lists everywhere. And why not? This classic from 1985 has it all. A great soundtrack, time travel, romance, action, comedy, and a star-making performance by a then-relatively unknown TV star Michael J. Fox. Originally conceived in 1980 by director Robert Zemeckis and Robert Gale, Back to the Future was rejected numerous times by studios. They were looking for something more in tune with the raunchy comedies of the time. Zemeckis had directed three films before Back to the Future, and his most recent, 1984's Romancing the Stone with Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner, had been his most successful, and finally gave him the needed leverage to make his passion project. Of note, the studio had expected Romancing the Stone to totally bomb, and as a result, he was actually fired from the next film he was supposed to direct, a little picture from the 80s called Cocoon, which would eventually be directed by Ron Howard. With Back to the Future getting the green light, Zemeckis wanted to cast Michael J. Fox in the lead role of Marty McFly, the teenager who travels to the past and has to ensure his parents meet and fall in love to save his future. 
The problem was that Fox was part of the TV show Family Ties as Alex Keaton. And the producers would not even let Zemeckis approach Fox about the role as he was needed to carry the show in absence of Meredith Baxter Burney due to her maternity leave. She played Alex's mother on the show, and having two stars unavailable could spell doom for the sitcom. Enter Eric Stoltz. Appearing in over 60 films, Eric Stoltz is known for his dramatic work in films like Mask, Memphis Belle, The Water Dance, Some Kind of Wonderful, Pulp Fiction, and one of my personal favorites, Two Days in the Valley. As you can see from the few titles I rattled off, Eric Stoltz is not really a comedic actor, and deft comedic instincts were vital for the role. Shooting commenced in November of 1984, and it was becoming apparent to Robert Zemeckis that Eric Stoltz was not the right fit for the role, as his take on the character was approached from the more serious angle of the consequences of time travel and its aftermath. The tough decision was made to recast the role with a lot of the film already in the can. The studio would be able to secure Michael J. Fox, but he would have to work around his Family Ties shooting schedule, which ultimately meant that Fox would work on Family Ties from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., then head to work on Back to the Future until about 2.30 in the morning. This lasted for two full months, but the end result was nothing short of magnificent and worth the effort. Back to the Future was an instant success, earning $380 million worldwide and spawning two successful sequels. There is some footage, though, that's available online with some of the scenes filmed with Eric Stoltz, and you can decide for yourself if he was a good fit. If you look very closely at the actual film, you will see that a small part of Eric Stoltz's work did make it on the big screen. During the diner scene where Marty punches Biff, you can see, if you pause it, that the footage Eric Stoltz shot was used for the punch. So I guess we can say that both versions of Marty McFly made it into the film. This has been Dean with the 3324 Podcast, and we will see you on the flip side. This has been a 3324 Podcast quick hit. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so please make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 